Hello, I just wanted to welcome you on your journey to Hopton. I'm very, very pleased that you're able to take the time to go with the set. It's great when you're making a movie, everything so temporary. Don't surprise that the sets and the book clocks that you make, that they all just get thrown away. And so I'm delighted that Hopton has managed to survive. And I'm really pleased that you're taking the time to visit it tonight. I hope that you enjoy yourself. It's been years ago that we were flying around the helicopter and found the Alexander Farm. CEO, but he is also the middle son of Ian Alexander, who originally bought this farm back in 1978. However, though, in 1998, Ian Alexander got a dock on his door for main location scout. Now, this location scout had one very important job to do. That, of course, was to find the perfect location for the Lord of the Rings movie set. Now, as David Comer, the location scout, had originally flown over this farm a couple of days prior to got the good deal. And him knocking on that door, he'd found three things. The three things he'd found was a lake, a tree, and a rising hill now known as Bilbo's Hobbit Hole. He then knocked on the end of Alexander's door and asked if he could have, asked if he could have a close look at everything by foot. Ian basically looked this clip and down and said, I thought it was close against behind your smoke looks like a sheep. Sure go for it. And so of course he did. Now, six weeks later, David Comer returned with some very important people. One of them, of course, was his boss, Peter Jackson, the director, who wasn't quite a sir just yet. He also returned with some producers and two concept sketch artists known as John Howell and Alan Lee. Now though folks, I want you all to grab out your phones and cameras because out to the right hand side is your very first glimpse of the Hobbiton movie set. We have an old oak barrel, a thatched mill house, a double stone arch bridge and of course a beautiful green dragon and that we're later on today we will be getting a complimentary drink. Now back in 2002 is when we first started our tourism business out here. However, back then it was known as the Green Scenic Tours. And the main reason that we started this was because the Alexanders were sick of seeing people dressed up as hobbits, elves, and of course a mighty wizard gang now gallivanting across their farmlands. The last straw for them was somewhat dressed up as Gandalf, meditating underneath the party tree. In Hobbiton. Yay! It's the uh, <laughs> You've done it. <laughs> now, this little area here is in fact known as Gandalf's Cutting. The main reason that we call it this is because there is quite a few scenes where Gandalf does in fact appear through here in his horse drawn cart. There is one scene in particular that you guys saw on the bus between Frodo and Gandalf. Well, of course, just after this, Frodo leaps into Gandalf's arms, and giving him a massive hug. Um, and then gets talking, gets laughing. They actually ride through here, heading all the way through Hobbiton, and then finding themselves all the way up the top there. Mm. However, though, in order to make it look like Gandalf was his respected height at seven foot tall, 
even though Sir Ian McKellen himself stands at about five foot ten. <laughs> now, on the other hand, you have Frodo. Now, Elijah Wood stands at about five foot five. He is, in fact, the tallest actor that could play a hobbit at five foot five. <laughs> Letting you know now, folks, I am five foot six. I am officially too tall to be a hobbit. I'll <laughs> a hobbit out here in Hobbiton. Not too bad. Now, hobbits are meant to be about three foot seven, which is pretty much up to my hip height, by the way. So in order for us to create this height difference between our two characters, we did in fact have to place our two actors in a specially designed cart that was longer and skinnier and could fit through these pathways. But they could also fit Gandalf all the way up the front next to the cameras. And Frodo sat three meters behind them. Now, this here was used to create what we call forced perspective. It is, of course, making you see it one way, when in actual fact, it is a completely different way. Now, as you may have noticed, we definitely use forced perspective out here with our hobbit holes. So we have a nice big yellow door up the back there. Now that has been made to 90% scale and it's perfect for you guys here wanting to be hobbit height. <laughs> However though, if you are sick of looking short in your photos, I know I am, <laughs> and you'd like to look a little bit taller, come and stand in front of one of our smaller doors. Now the majority of what you guys will be seeing today are these smaller doors, like the ones down here, the, red and, uh, the green and blue ones. Now these ones have been made to 60% scale and it's perfect for you guys wanting to be Gandalf height. So there you go folks, that is of course that forced perspective. Now as I said, maybe, there are in fact 44 hobbit holes for you guys to see today. And right, that's quite a lot of hobbit holes. Now you guys have seen four doors, now we're gonna go see some more doors. Are you ready? Ah ha ha ha. I know I'm really funny aren't I? Ah ha ha. So if you're ready folks, Grab out those phones and cameras once more and let's make it way through to the Dell. Let's go guys. <laughs> find two of our hobbit holes just in this area here. The first hobbit hole I want you guys to find is in fact our beekeeper hobbit hole. Now if you guys cannot spot that from here either you've got someone in front of you or you might need to get yourself a new pair of glasses. The second one that I want you guys to find is a little bit trickier. See this guy here does not like people but he loves his bottles. He is in fact the town drunk. Now of course Every town, village, family does have one. If you don't know who it is, well hey, it could be you. <laughs> Those giggling, I think I know who it is in your family. <laughs> now please folks, have some fun. Find those two hobbit holes and they'll be meeting by the woodcutters area over there very shortly. So please, head through. Did you want to tie your umbrella string back around? Hobbit 
checking out some hobbit holes. Outdoors. who live here are actually quite wealthy. See, these guys can afford 12 windows on their hobbit hole, whilst everyone else can afford one to two, or maybe even sometimes none at all. Now, as these guys have 12 windows on their hobbit hole, this means that these guys have a 180 degree view hobbit hole here. Which also means, by the way, they have the most incredible 
incredible view, which you guys can clearly see out here. Now that view is in fact in a few of our scenes, one of which involves a seat that looks very much like this one down here with a pipe and a book on it. However though for this scene, the seat is actually up with a pumpkin now lives. And on the seat sat both Bilbo and Gandalf as they are blowing smoke rings to their pipes. Gandalf blows a massive ship through Bilbo's smoke ring as looking out at the sunset. However, you might be able to tell today there is in fact one thing wrong with this scene. Can anybody hear him what that might be? I can't see an apple at all. The sun does not set in that direction. Sun rises in the east and it sets in the west behind Bilbo's hobbit hole. So in order for us to have that sunset scene, we'd in fact have to bring in the actors for both Bilbo and Gandalf in between three to four o'clock in the morning during sunrise just to film that sunset scene for you guys to see today. Now, do we have anyone here who has been here before? Very quick hands up. Nobody, brilliant. So we have in fact got an artificial tree somewhere out here in Hobbiton. Now I chose this spot because you guys can see absolutely everything from here. But can you guys find where that artificial tree might be? It seems too perfect, too good to be true. It is in fact this yeah. one right up here on top of the hill. Now that entire tree is meant to be an oak tree. Uh, we had an, a mould made of an old oak tree to create what, we, what you guys see here today. Um, now if this tree was real, the roots would have buried deep and that house would be no longer. Now this entire tree has been made with a steel frame, silicon and expanding foam and currently has around 250,000 plastic leaves attached to it. However though, during Hobbit filming days, these leaves were in fact made from silk, shipped in from Taiwan, and there were 376,000 of them on this tree. Unfortunately, we found out the hard way that silk bleached quite easily in the sun. So we did in fact have to bring in some volunteers to spray paint these leaves back in front the right shade of green. Well, it took them four days to do. And then of course, years later, all of their hard work was completely torn out and these plastic leaves were then placed in. So there you go folks, the uh, magic of movie making, eh? <coughs> now, for those of you who have taken your bag in photos, congratulations. You guys can make your way down towards the water pump, grab yourself a drink of water, just try and stay off the grass for me. Those of you who have not yet taken your photos, please do so and meet me down there very shortly. Thank you guys, see you soon.
so many. very cheeky, very mischievous little boys, known as Merry and Pippin. Now these two decide to steal one of Gandalf's massive dragon fireworks. They set that off underneath a tent that was set up over here by the party tree. Now this is the original tree that they found back in 1998, and uh, it is still here to this day, luckily. Now that firework ends up going off. That tent ends up going sky high. However, though, when that firework does go off, there are some pyrotechnic sparks that come off it, because of course it is an artificial firework. But there is a scream that is heard. Now that scream actually came from Billy Boyd himself, who of course played Pippin. Now this poor man was absolutely terrified of the pyrotechnic sparks. They set the firework off anyway, he screamed like a child, and Dominic Monaghan, who played Mary, almost ruined this take due to laughing too hard. <laughs> However, luckily they stopped all that before uh, they cut before he could start laughing. So now what we have is the perfect shot of the firework going up as well as a tent and screaming coming from Billy Boyd. <laughs> so there you go. Now those two are also part of a fellowship. That fellowship also includes the hero, Frodo Baggins, and the hero's best friend, Samwise Gamgee. So we are in fact going to make our way over to Samwise Gamgee's Hobbit Hole. So please folks, follow me on through and let's get going. Can your birds say though? Book echo! Oh. sail away. He then has come back home up this pathway here and a little girl comes out this gate down this path and gives him a massive hug. Now as we all should know Sam was in fact played by the incredible Sean Astin. What some of you may not know is that little girl was played by his daughter. Now that little girl is Ali Astin. At time of filming she was about three to four years old. She is now 27 Oh. and has just graduated from Harvard University. So she wise. Yeah. But, um, sh <laughs> uh, sorry, that was a really bad Samwise joke. <laughs> Those of you who have just caught on, it's okay. Now, there was a baby in Rosie's arms. That little girl was six to eight months old, and yes, that was Sarah McLeod's real child as well. Um, Sorry to say folks, but she today is now 24 to 25 years old. So if that don't make you feel old, well I don't know what will. <laughs> You're yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, <that's first. laughs> yeah now, we're going to move our attention down here towards number one and number two Bagshot Road. As very shortly, I will be splitting you guys up into roughly half. So at half we're going into the green door with me, and half we're going into the red door with whoever comes out of there very shortly. Now before we do head into that though, there's a few things to go through. First up is, if you are above 170 centimetres or 5 foot 6, you are going to want to duck with your hips, especially through the door and corridor. Hello, 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 hello. Um, now my 6 foot 5, please, no Gandalf moments out here. Yes, we have a 6 foot 5. 
Crawl. <laughs> <laughs> it could crawl and he still would be too tall. <laughs> um, however though, as well, you guys can touch everything. Alright, this is not a museum, do not treat it as such. Have fun, try and pick things up. If it does not move beneath your fingertips, however, please try and keep it where it is. It has been placed there for a reason. And you guys can sit on the furniture and lay on the bench. Have fun with it. And this one today here is Sarah. She'll be taking half of it. inside the beautiful green dragon inn which you guys can very clearly see from here um, there is a few things that I want you guys to think of they are of course your drink options yeah. now there are four of them for you guys to choose from today 
The first is an Oat Barton Stout, which is a dark beer, kind of like Guinness. The second one is an Amber Ale, just like your normal beer, slightly lighter in colour, slightly lighter in alcohol. The third is my personal favourite, only because I do not drink beer. And is in fact <laughs> the alcoholic apple cider. Still very tasty. And still for everyone over the age of 18. <laughs> I can see you looking at Dad like, hmm, can I have a sip of yours? Uh, now the fourth one is for those who are under the age of 18. Yeah. Or for those who just do not feel like drinking alcohol today, we do have a nice cold non-alcoholic ginger beer. Ooh. And also it is perfect for those who are not quite ready yet, I guess, for our windy roads. I don't like a Wonder Roads either. So yes, they also help with nausea. Funnily enough. Uh, so we'll be inside for about 20 to 25 minutes, uh, which gives you guys plenty of time to finish off your drinks. Head up to the bar again if you guys would like to purchase a second one. You're more than welcome to. There is also a food counter available down there as well for you guys to purchase some very delicious food. And yes, it is all made in-house by our lovely chefs. So if you guys are ready, we're going to make our way down towards the Green Dragon and let's have some fun with it. Let's go. Open the gate. <laughs> Open the gate.
important that you guys first bring to walk through Gandalf's paddock. So please, stay with your family, stay with your friends, and let's head through. Let's go guys. Well, I hope that you enjoyed yourselves, and I just wanted to thank you again for coming along and uh, experiencing Hobbiton. Very, very proud of that. There's a little special magical place, as I'm sure you'll agree, down here at the bottom of the road. So please sit back and enjoy your ride, and we'll have a look at a few hot trips, shall we? for making us part of your Middle Earth experience. We wish you a safe journey throughout New Zealand and hope you come back to see us again soon. You're welcome any time. Don't bother knocking. And remember what Bilbo used to say. It's a dangerous business, Frodo. Going out your door, step onto the road, and if you don't keep your feet, there's no knowing where you might be swept off to. the Shire, Mr. Furlong. It'll be spring soon. The orchards will be a blossom. And the birds will be nesting in the hazel thicket. And they'll be sowing the summer barley in the lower fields. And eating the first of the strawberries with cream. Fellowship of the Ring, though eternally bound by friendship, was ended.
I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has come and joined us here in Middle Earth today. I hope you all truly enjoyed yourselves. If not, yes you did. We had a great time. Now for those of you who are continuing your adventures around Downside or New Zealand, please drive safely as the roads can become quite slippery and dangerous, especially when wet. However, though, if you guys are just starting up, I hope you've had a great time and I truly hope to see you guys again in the future. So thank you all and Kaki Tiano!